My name is Andrea with Foodimentary Adventures in Food. In my household, there's me, my husband, and our adorable two-year-old little boy. On our channel, you'll find simple and tasty dinners using everyday ingredients. So all this week I am focusing on eating from my freezer and pantry. And so this week I decided to make this cooking sauce, toasted sesame from HEB, which is a grocery store here in Texas. And all you do is just cook your pound of meat. And I used one pound, a little over a pound of chicken thighs. And, and then you just add that sauce into it. But I had some fresh broccoli that needed to be used, so I added that as well. The broccoli got way overcooked. Howard and I both tried um, the, the dish and didn't really feel like it had a lot of flavor. So then I decided to add this into it, the stir fry um, seasoning mix. And at first I added in just a little bit of seasoning and it really didn't help, so I ended up adding in the whole package and it's not salty at all. Really not a lot of flavor, really kind of disappointed in this meal, but it's something that I had in my pantry that I needed to use. Wow. And then I'm just serving it over some white rice. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we will see y'all next time. Quick and easy dinner tonight. We are eating from our freezer. We are having this freshetta naturally rising crust, supreme pizza, sausage pepperoni, green, red, yellow bell peppers, and onion. Um, I don't normally buy freshetta pizza, but I got it on sale a long time ago. Howard really likes the rising crust. We normally eat the Motor City, like the pan pizzas. So we're gonna have uh, this pizza tonight, rising crust. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we will see y'all next time. So I'm trying out a new recipe tonight for bacon cheeseburger pie. Harrison is having his dinner, so you may hear him from time to time. But in my skillet, I've got one pound of ground beef and one onion that I cooked up. The recipe calls for you to cook the bacon at the same time, but I felt like my bacon would be soggy if I did that. So I cooked my bacon separately. And as you can see, I just added it in. It also calls for some panko. And of course, I'll leave the recipe in the description box some Worcestershire sauce, adding that in, some ketchup and mustard, and some barbecue sauce. And I'm just gonna give this a good stir. Okay, so I have my meat all mixed up, and now what I'm doing is adding that meat mixture to a traditional pie crust um, the recipe specified not a deep dish, even though it seems like this is gonna be an awful lot of meat. Just gonna add it in. Okay, so I've got the meat all patted into the pie shell, and now I'm adding an egg to a bowl. And by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but my pie shell, I always thaw them out. It's just a frozen pie shell. I thaw them out. I don't use them from frozen. They just cook better. Um, I'm adding in my cheddar cheese and adding in my milk. I'm just gonna stir this up really well. And then I'm gonna add it on top of that cheeseburger filling. Okay, so here is that um, cheeseburger filling. Like I said, it fit. I was surprised that it fit, but I'm just gonna add that cheese mixture right on top. I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees. The recipe says to cook this pie for 15 minutes um, with the edges of the shell covered in foil and then remove the foil and bake it for another 15 minutes. I usually don't cook uh, baked goods at 400 degrees and I'm not gonna do that this time either. I'm gonna bake it at 350 degrees for a little bit longer because I don't want that um, bottom shell undercooked. Okay, so the cheeseburger pie is gone and I way overcooked it. So let me tell you where I messed up. So I did cook the pie for uh, 40 minutes at 350. When I checked it, the crust was very, very, very pale. So I turned up the oven to 400 degrees and I put it in there for, for an additional 15 minutes and this is what happened. Um, the, the cheese got way overcooked. The crust is kind of dark, um, but it's not burnt. But the problem is, is that the bottom crust is not done enough for me. So normally I par-bake my crust, but because there weren't any 
wet ingredients in this pie. I thought that it would cook and be fine. Um, next time I make it, I, I will par-bake the crust first. Um, but it does have a good flavor. It does taste like a cheeseburger. I just need to make some minor adjustments and try it again. So on the side, I'm just serving a side salad and we've got Thousand Island dressing for Howard and then um, this Olive Garden light for me. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time. So I'm trying out a new recipe for dinner tonight. It is called chicken enchilada soup. So in my pot, I have some garlic and oil and onions and I've already sauteed them. To that, I'm adding in some chicken stock. And of course, I'll make sure to leave the recipe in the description box. Now I'm just adding in some diced green chilies. The recipe actually calls for two cans, but I'm just gonna use one can. And I'm gonna add in a can of green enchilada sauce. Looks like this. And I'm going to add in one cup of just regular salsa or jarred salsa. And I'm going to add in my chicken. And I am using dark meat shredded chicken. Just gonna pour that in. So the directions say to uh, cover this, let it come to a simmer, uh, let it simmer for about, I'm sorry, let it come to a boil and let it simmer for about 20 to 30 minutes covered. And then I'm gonna come back and add in some Monterey Jack cheese and some softened cream cheese. Okay, so here's dinner. This is Howard's plate and he added some Monterey Jack um, cheese and some avocado. There's more avocado in there, but it just sunk to the bottom. He didn't want any sour cream or anything on his soup. And then I am having mine with tortilla chips and they, you can kind of see them. They haven't sunk all the way to the bottom. And then some Monterey Jack cheese. So what I will tell you about this soup is that it is very thin. It's not a hearty soup at all, so it's super thin, but it does have good flavor. I'd probably make it again. Maybe I would add less broth next time just to make it a little bit thicker. And it did take a long time for my cream cheese to kind of melt out. Even though it you know, was at room temperature and it was um, a name brand cheese, it was Philly, um, it took a long time for those lumps to come out, so. But anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we will see y'all next time. So for dinner tonight, we are having egg salad sandwiches. I did not feel like cooking much at all. I did record a video on how I make egg salad, and that will be out on Thursday. But this is my plate. I like my egg salad grilled, like a grilled cheese sandwich. I do this with egg salad, and I also do chicken salad. It's so good. Um, so, um, having that and then I just had some french fries in the freezer um, that I needed to use up so we are having that and they are the great value crinkle cut fries and then this is Howard's plate he does not like his sandwiches toasted and he added some habanero jack cheese on the bottom and avocado as well and then for dessert I decided to make these peach dumplings which I have made before on our channel they are made out of crescent rolls and they are so good and very easy to make I'll make sure to link them in the description box. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time.